Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. If you'll just begin to know who you are and think the way God wants you to think, your life has no choice but to follow because where your mind goes, the man follows. There's an interesting phrase in the Bible that was really pretty major for me in my learning cycle. Several different places the Bible says put on and then several other places it says put off. Put on the new nature, put on the new man, put off the old man. Put on Christ Jesus. Now every time you hear the word put on, it's something you've got to do on purpose. You got to go beyond what you think, what you want, and what you feel, and you go to what the Word says, and you do it. The Bible says, put on love. Well, you know what that means? It means that I get up every day, and I determine that I'm going to walk in love with people, that I'm going to be good to people, and it doesn't matter how I feel, it doesn't matter if I think they deserve it, it doesn't matter whether I want to, it doesn't matter what I think, I am putting it on. I think I got a nice outfit on, it matches, but you know what, it didn't jump on my body. I didn't go stand in front of the closet tonight and say. <laughs> I put it on and I put it on carefully. We do way too much by feelings and not nearly enough by decision and determination. Ephesians 4 that we read last night, verses 22 through 24. Let's go back there because I know a lot of you weren't here last night. Are you getting this? Is it coming across? See, there's no reason not to have victory. But you got to know what the manual says. <laughs> Put off and discard your old unrenewed self, verse 22. Actually, it sounds kind of violent. It says, strip away. <laughs> strip yourselves of your farmer nature. Put off and discard your old unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lusts and desires that spring from delusion. And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. And put on the new nature, the regenerate self. Well, the way that we begin to do this is in our thinking, and we begin to say, I'm not the old person I used to be, I'm a new creature in Christ. You begin to think like this, you begin to meditate on this. When you wake up in the morning, you don't lay there and think about everything that's wrong with you, you think God is living in me. <laughs> and he's made me right with him. I have the righteousness of God. Every blessing that I can possibly need that heaven offers has already been given unto me. Woo, I am blessed. If you'll just begin to know who you are and think the way God wants you to think, your life has no choice but to follow because where your mind goes, the man follows. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So does he become. All you got to do is believe what's already yours. Get your mind renewed to it, know who you are in Christ, and it's all over but the shouting. And we're going to learn how to do that too. How many of you agree that sometimes we spend our whole Christian walk trying to get something we've already got and just don't? You know, it's kind of like, well, we see that we have it, but we don't feel like we have it, and so therefore we wait to feel like it. It's really pretty sad how much we listen to our feelings. And it really does take a long time to get to the point where you don't let them rule you. But you need to really make a decision tonight that you have feelings, but you are not your feelings. You're not your feelings. You have feelings, but don't let them have you. You have feelings. You're always going to have feelings, but you can manage your feelings. You don't have to let them rule you. Doesn't matter how, well, I, I just feel like a big mess. Well, too bad. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. Get up and put it on. You're not going to put on something that you don't know you have. Now, I don't have the time to do all this, so I won't even try, but here's some of the things the Bible says to put on. Put on Christ Jesus. That's in Galatians 3.27. 
Put on the new nature, we just read that. Ephesians 6, put on the armor of God. Put on the shoes of peace. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the helmet of salvation. Take the sword of the Spirit out of its sheath and begin to wield it against the enemy. That means don't just have this, use it. Use it. When the devil's coming after you and telling you you're no good, you get it out and read it to him. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I have been set apart and made holy by the blood of the Lamb. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment I will show to be in the wrong. There's nothing more dangerous to the kingdom of darkness than a believer with the Word of God in his mouth. Did you hear me? I'm going to say it again. There's nothing more dangerous than a believer in Jesus Christ with the Word of God in his mouth. You know that our mouth gets us in so much trouble that is absolutely disgusting. Man, I, I just feel like nobody loves me, and I'm so sick and tired of never having any money, and I'll never have anything. Every time I just get a little bit of money, the devil takes it. I just wish I was blessed. Everybody I know is blessed. I wish I was blessed. We have to put off the old man, put on the new man. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you're turned into another man or another woman, a new creature altogether. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power to be my witnesses. Not just power to do something, power to be somebody. Power to be a witness. Power to get out in the world and act like Christ. Not just power to go to church on Sunday and the rest of the week act like everybody else. The Bible says that when Saul was given the honor by God to be king, that the Spirit came upon him and he was turned into another man. I love that. I love that. You need a new beginning, then you need Christ. We got this letter recently, and I thought it was pretty indicative of a lot of people in the world. A girl wrote and said, I believe God has asked me to do something that's going to be difficult. Now listen to this. But I don't feel he has given me the strength to do it. What should I do? Should I just go ahead and take action believing that I have what I need? Or should I keep waiting until I feel that I have the strength? How many of you would know the answer to that? You know what? Why did she not feel it? Because God doesn't want us to operate on feelings. You don't even want to know how I feel sometimes between these meetings. <laughs> if I showed up based on how I felt, I might not be here a lot. But I will say this, I have never one time gotten this far and had God fail me. I have never one time not had him show up because what I need is in me. Now let me tell you something. You know when the water parts? When you put your foot in it. Have you ever heard that phrase, well you put your foot in it now? You know what that means? Now you're in so far you can't get out. And that's what God's waiting for. He's waiting for people to get far enough in that they can't get out. Then you'll see the water parts. God wasn't going to let this woman feel that she had everything because then she wouldn't be doing it by faith. He wanted her to hear from him, know what he had said, believe his word, that he had equipped her to do what he had called her to do, and that when she put her foot in it, <laughs> you think I always know what to say? And most of the time when I think I know what I'm going to say, I don't say what I thought. When I left here this morning, I was so tired. This is the third one of these I've done in six weeks, and 
In between, I've edited a book and done TV and other stuff. And, you know, hey, I'm not complaining, but you get tired. And I was, you know, we got a two-hour time change coming from St. Louis to here. And I was just, man, I was tired. I thought I was doing okay till I started eating. And then it was just like, oh. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> well, I can tell you what. I didn't feel like I could pull this off tonight. I didn't feel all that hot. I took a little nap and still didn't feel all that great. Took a bath and still didn't feel all that great. Did some studying, didn't feel particularly anointed. But I put my foot in it. <laughs> Come on, when you put your foot in the water, then it parts. Stop asking yourself how you feel. Don't let your feelings vote. Why don't you just have a little chat with your soul tonight and say, okay, soul, we got a new deal going on. You can think what you want to, but I'm not paying any attention to you. You can feel the way you want, but I'm not paying any attention to you either. And it doesn't even really matter what you want because we're going to do what God says from now on. Hey. Let's go to Joshua 3.13. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan shall come down from above and shall be cut off and they shall stand in one heap. So God told them to cross the Jordan. And they look at it and it's a solid sea. There's no way they can walk across it. And God, with the sense of humor he's got, says, okay, guys, here it is. When you put your foot in it, and you can cross over on dry ground. I think that's an amazing lesson. Think about this. Verse 14, so when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, think how ridiculous they looked. They're marching straight at the Red Sea. Got the Ark of God in front of them. <laughs> Don't you know people thought they were nuts? Probably most of them thought they were nuts. It's like... Verse 15, and when those who bore the ark had come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the ark were in the brink of the water, <laughs> then the Jordan parted, and they were able to cross over on dry ground. Some people never experience the fullness of their destiny because they wait for feelings to give them courage rather than acting on God's word. And you can act on this word that God has for you. But there's also going to be things that God puts in your heart. Probably some of you right now are in such a horrible mess because you are in relationships, dating relationships, friendship relationships that down deep inside you know are poisoning your life and hindering you from growth in God. But you won't, put, you won't walk away from it. Because you feel, you think, you want, you want, you think, you feel, you think, you want, you feel, you think, you want, you want, you think, you feel. If we'd ever just get around to obeying God, let's look at Luke 5. You know, I'll be honest with you, even if you've got a job that causes you to sin to keep it, you better just unload it and go get another one. Well, I can't help it. It's my job. I had to be willing to walk away from a job because they were asking me to do something that I didn't feel was right. And I was really afraid that I would get fired, but I ended up getting promoted. It's amazing what God will do if you trust Him. <clears throat> Luke 5, 1 through 7. It occurred that while the people pressed on Jesus to hear the message of God, he was standing by the lake. He saw two boats drawn up by the lake. The fishermen had gone down from them and were washing their nets. Getting into the one of the boats that belonged to Simon Peter, 
He requested that they draw away a little bit from the shore so he could teach the crowd, and he sat down and continued to teach the people. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a haul. Simon said, Master, we toiled all night, we're exhausted, we caught nothing. Now, get this picture. They'd been fishing all night, had caught nothing. They were exhausted, worn out. They had washed their nets, folded them up, and I'm sure that was a huge job back then. They didn't have any mechanical equipment to help them. You got to get the picture or you're not going to understand this. They had to be so tired, up all night, fished all night. And you know how it is when you've been working hard at something and, you, and nothing works. They did not catch any fish. And here Jesus comes along and says, I want you to go back out again, only this time you need to go in deeper water. See, some of you just aren't deep enough. You know what I mean by that? You don't want to get in over your head. You want to stay where you got your feet solidly on the ground and you're in control and you don't have to take any chances. Amen. So Peter told him what he thought, what he wanted, and what he felt, but I love what he said next. But on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets. I will. I don't want to. I don't feel like it. I don't think it's going to work, but I will do what you have asked me to do. Come on. I will. Well, guess what happened? They caught so many fish that their boat started to sink. And they had to call in all their partners who also were out there fishing, and they filled all their boats up to where their boats almost started to sink. Do you know why I have a fullness of God in my life and an overflow that I can share with you? Because I'm in over my head. And you don't have any idea how far in I'm over my head. But the good thing about being over your head is once you're over your head, it doesn't matter how much deeper you go. Come on now. You need to stop trying to take care of yourself and start obeying God. I mean, I look around and I think, how in the world are we doing what we're doing? How are we doing this? I don't know. I don't mean this to sound ridiculous, but I really don't know that much about what I'm doing. I talk. I love God. I pray. I study the Word. I seek His face. I try to walk in love. Try to obey God. Repent when I make mistakes. God gives me ideas about what to preach. He gives me creativity. He keeps it fresh. He gives me favor. People are learning something. I don't know. 32 years ago, I was making my bed. I'd listened to my first teaching tape I'd ever heard. It was a message called Cross Over to the Other Side. I, did not, I couldn't even believe that somebody could get a whole hour's worth of preaching out of one verse and keep me interested. I was like, <laughs> and a desire rose up in me while I was making my bed. And I heard the Lord say, you're going to go all over the world and teach my gospel. And what I heard then was you're going to have a large teaching tape ministry. And the thing that's interesting is we now send not the old kind of tapes, but we send recorded messages out from our office to all these TV stations, to all the radio stations, all these CDs and DVDs. And so God really did call me to a teaching tape ministry, and I'm going worldwide in 38 languages. But let me tell you something, I had to put my foot in it. First of all, I lost all my friends that got thrown out of my church. They thought I was stark raving mad. Come on now. Well, some of you wouldn't put your foot in that far. As soon as somebody judged you and criticized you a little bit, you'd say, ooh.
As soon as you thought you weren't going to be invited to the party or be part of the social group at church anymore, you'd draw your foot out of that water and back off. That's when you need to just get in deeper. Come on. I think I'm preaching better than you're acting. And then the time came that I had to quit my job to prepare for ministry, and that meant we weren't going to have enough money to pay our bills. Oh, that was fun thing to put your foot in. And I thought, well, surely after the great sacrifice I made, we'd have financial miracles. Well, for six years, I had to believe my guts out for socks and underwear, and I'd go with my two or three or four bucks to garage sales and try to find my kids' shoes and clothes. And I saw the miracle working power of God. That's why I believe in God for the amount of money that we need now doesn't disturb us. It's like, God, you started this. I'm over my head. You're either going to make it work or I'm going to die trying. But here I am. I've got my foot in it now. There's no getting out. Come on, some of you just need to put your foot in the water. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The one thing we need more than anything else is to know who we are. We are children of God. We are anointed by the Holy Spirit. And 1 John 2 says that anointing will not go away, it abides. So whether I feel anointed or not, I am anointed. Jesus said, for lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the earth. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, I do not ever have to ask myself if I feel God. He said, when you pray according to my word in my name, I will hear you and I will answer you. Therefore, I never have to say, well, I'm praying, but I don't know if God's hearing me. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. Every time the devil tells me that I'm no good, I can say, you are a liar. We have the mind of Christ. So every time the devil tries to tell us we're stupid, we say, wrong, I have the mind of Christ. I don't care how many people told you that you're dumb and you're stupid and you're not smart, you need to keep saying, I have the mind of Christ, I have the mind of Christ, I have the mind of Christ. Oh, and this is so good and I don't really have the time to preach it, but we do not have to compare ourselves with anybody else. Because the Bible says in Galatians and Ephesians that in Christ there is no more any distinction between us. There is no Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave nor free. We are all one in Christ. In other words, anything that we are that's a benefit, we are in Christ. And anything that we're not, He takes care of it. So there's no more distinctions, there's no more classes. The president of the company is no different and no better in God's eyes than the guy who cleans the toilets. So we don't have to strive to be something that we're not and finagle around to get in a position that we don't have the grace to handle. We can be happy cleaning the toilets if that's what God's called us to do. I hate it when people say, well, I'm just a housekeeper. I'm just a stay-at-home mom. You are not just in anything. You are a child of God, the righteousness of God in Christ, anointed by the Holy Ghost. You have gifts and talents and abilities. God loves you. He lives in you. He's got a plan for your life. You're a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become brand new. And you need to celebrate! Well, if we're really sincere believers in Jesus Christ, I believe that we're going to work with Him to put off our old nature, that nature of selfishness and self-centeredness, and work with Him to put on the new creature that He has made us to be 
in our relationship with Jesus Christ. One that's full of love and seriously desiring to do the will of God. Well, that means that we have to be willing to change. We have to be willing to work with the Holy Spirit to let Him change us. You know, we can't do it ourselves. We always need God to help us in everything that we do. And I believe it's God's grace that changes us. Yet God doesn't work apart from us. I always say if we do what we can do, then God will do what we cannot do.